If you thought that the courtroom battle between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp was over, if you thought it was in pop culture's rearview mirror, you got another thing coming. Because Amber Heard is already looking to overturn the defamation lawsuit verdict, and her legal team just took action and asked a judge to do so. Now, here's a reminder of how the verdict went down inside that Fairfax, Virginia courtroom. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. Question. Defamatory implication was designed and intended by Ms. Heard. Answer, yes. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Answer, yes. Now, Heard and Depp were both found liable for defamation in their lawsuits against each other, but the jury awarded $15 million in damages to Depp, which was reduced to just over $10 million because of a state cap on punitive damages, and $2 million was awarded to Heard. Well, now, just over a month later, Heard's lawyers are taking action. Her team, in a 43-page court filing, called the verdict excessive and asked the judge to either dismiss the case or order a new trial. Now, her team made multiple arguments in the filing, among them that they were improperly precluded from mentioning that Depp lost his 2020 libel case against the publisher of Britain's The Sun newspaper over an article that called him a wife beater. The judge in that case found the article, found the article to be substantially true and accepted 12 of the 14 alleged incidents of violence. Heard's team also argue that Depp and his team weren't able to demonstrate any actual reputational or financial damages as a result of Heard's Washington Post op-ed at the center of the case. And they also brought up a new issue, that one of the jurors was not who he claimed to be. The filing says, quote, Juror 15 had a birth year of 1945. Juror 15, however, was clearly born later than 1945. Publicly available information demonstrates that he appears to have been born in 1970. The facts show Juror 15 was decades younger than the individual on the jury panel list, raising questions as to whether they were the same or different people. Now, you might recall that I was in that courtroom for most of the trial, so I'm not surprised that Heard is fighting the verdict and especially the massive damages award. However, I do wonder whether these issues would be more successful in an appeal rather than this post-trial motion, and whether they're really enough to overturn the verdict given the jury's decision and the mountain of evidence that was presented to them by both sides over the course of six weeks. Well, joining me right now is attorney Richard Schoenstein, a legal analyst for the Law and Crime Network. Rich, great to see you, and thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Jesse. All right, so we have to be clear that this is different than an appeal. I knew she was going to appeal. Were you surprised that she filed this? Absolutely not. This is standard operating procedure. When you lose a verdict in a civil trial, you file a post-trial motion to set aside the verdict. You file it with the trial verdict. It is standard procedure, no surprise at all any grounds this works you know the brief and i read the 43 page brief it's not terrible you actually read it it's not like you're I just did. picking it up and no, saying no, no. Yeah. i looked at every page and it's not terrible but it's not going to win there are no arguments here that i think are going to get judge as karate to change the jury's verdict that is what they're basically asking is the trial judge to alter the jury's verdict after she gave the case to the jury let him hear six weeks of of evidence gave them very complicated instructions and let let him render a verdict. Here's the issue with the juror, right? That juror question about whether or not they were born in the wrong year. It's not so much a, a clerical error, which I know wouldn't be grounds for a new trial, but if it's possible the wrong person served on that jury, isn't that a problem? Yeah, that is, a, that is the provocative issue. My first response to the issue is why are we hearing about it now? Didn't they have the sheet? Didn't the lawyers have the sheet at the beginning of the trial? And didn't they see the juror? for six weeks and no, he wasn't born in 1945. They were busy in the middle of yeah, the trial. Yeah. Let's say they but, noticed it now, though. Let's put say it they just aside, discovered it. it. That would be the one issue. If this was a juror who didn't belong on the jury pool at all, wasn't supposed to be in a building, that might be problematic. <laughs> And what happens then? I, I don't know. You know, one issue is whether or not that might be deemed harmless error because it was a seven person jury. It was unanimous, and a judge could conclude that that didn't affect the verdict. They would have had the same verdict anyway. So they could still get past it. But I do think that, that if it turns out that that person didn't belong in the trial, there could be a problem. You and I have talked about this on Law and Crime about the damages award, right? Yep. The, whether or not that was excessive. So put aside the fact that the jury ultimately found that Amber Heard. Fame Johnny Depp, $10 million, $5 million in punitive, even though it went down. 
Is that too much here? Because again, the question is how much did the op-ed hurt him? Well, the problem with this argument, Jesse, is he was looking for 50 million. So my view of this verdict is the jury wanting to award him something, but the jury tried not to be excessive. I mean, when you think about Johnny Depp's life, $10 million is half a movie. That's what he gets for half a movie. It's not that big of an award in the life of, of Johnny Depp, and I don't see the court saying it's excessive. So you don't think that this motion will win. What about an appeal? Is it going to be kind of similar to what we're hearing in these arguments, and does she have a greater success? Because it's a little bit of a different avenue with the appeal. Sure, the appeal will take more issues. Part of the reason you do a post-trial motion like this is to preserve some of the issues for appeal. So if there are issues you haven't briefed previously or didn't argue at trial, you put them in your motion so that you can appeal them. So the appeal may be this and much more. The appeal could be lots of different evidentiary issues that came up during the trial. The appeal could be the pre-trial motions that let the claims go forward. It could really be much more expansive. Let's play little what ifs here, okay? Okay. If she gets a new trial, either from this motion or an appeal, you think it would actually go to trial? You think they would fight it out again? We would. I'd be back in Fairfax County. You think that's going to actually happen? You know, I can't imagine. I, what I, my problem, I struggle here, is I don't know what her long-term plan is. Johnny Depp won this trial when he took the stand and got off unscathed. And people took his side on social media. And he's going to be back in the movies. He's won. Would it matter if the right. judge reduce the damages? Would it matter if Amber Heard won an appeal in the grand scheme of things? I don't think so. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Richard Schoenstein, best hair in media. Thanks so much for coming on. <laughs> Thank you. And before Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.